So as we have already seen that Athena is most suitable for use cases where we want to run ad hoc analytics. It is definitely not suitable for regular analytics or regular data warehousing systems. For those scenarios, we should use Redshift. But what are the different use cases or different architecture that we can build using Athena? So let's say we have streaming application. So I'm starting with streaming application and you already know what streaming application is. It streams data from various sources. So it can be IoT devices or CCTV cameras or sensors, etc. And let's say the data is sent to Kinesis Streams or Kafka. And from there, it is sent to Kinesis Data Firehose and which eventually sends the data to S3 Data Lake. And let's say we have to run some ad hoc analytics on top of it. Of course, we can use Athena and either we can use Athena console or BI tools to do analytics on top of the data or the data that we are getting from streaming application via Kinesis Streams or Kafka. From Kinesis Streams, it is going to Data Firehose and then to S3 Data Lake and then Athena is getting used there. This use case might not be that prevalent because if you have a streaming use case, you might need to do some processing. So that's where EMR or glue would come into picture. So what would happen is that it does not matter whether the data comes in Kinesis Streams or Kafka. We want to do some real-time processing. So if you are using Spark streaming, then you can use EMR or glue. If you are using Flink, then you'll have to use EMR or Kinesis Flink. Or if you are using Kafka streams, then we'll have to use something else. So let's say we do the aggregation or do the processing and then we send the data to S3 after all the aggregation is done. And we have BI tools which do some ad hoc analytics or run some queries or ad hoc analytics queries using Athena. And that data can be retrieved from S3 data log. So, so all the streaming data is getting processed by EMR or Glue and then it is moved to S3. The moment it goes to S3, we can hook up Athena with it and then we can read data using either Athena console or BI tools. There is another use case. Let's say we have batch application or OLTP application. From there, let's say we get the data using CDC tools like AWS DMS or Database Migration Service or open source tools like uh, Debezium. So Debezium sends it to Kafka but let's say eventually it lands on S3. And as the data is coming from batch application or OLTP data sources, we need to do some aggregation or some processing or some transformation. So the transformation is done by Glue and then again, the transformed data is stored in S3 data lake. So as it is in S3, we can definitely use Athena on top of it. So the data, that is getting generated by batch application or OLTP databases or streaming application can be aggregated, transformed and moved to S3 data lake. And from there, we can use Athena. There can be BI tools also which can use Athena. Another use case wherein we use EMR to read uh, data from OLTP sources directly. So that can also happen. So Spark has JDBC connectors. So using those JDBC connectors, we can connect to the source OLTP database, do some processing and then move it to S3. The moment we move it to S3, we allow Athena to read data from it using SQL. Uh, then from EMR, we can send it to Redshift also, or we can get streaming data directly from Kinesis or Kafka using Redshift streaming ingestion using materialized views and from there, let's say the data is stored historically and as a best practice, we archive the data to S3. Again, the moment we move it to S3, we can access it using Athena. Not only that, we can access Redshift directly using Athena also uh, by adding Redshift in the, in the data source. Then we have OLTP databases like RDS, Aurora, DynamoDB, etc. And there are features uh, in these services using which you can export the snapshot, we can export the cluster, we can export individual tables to S3 data lake. Again, as the data is in S3 data lake, uh, Athena can access it and we can access the data using SQL. There are some other use cases also wherein 
uh, we can send application logs like VPC flow logs, uh, load balancer logs or other AWS service logs to S3 and from there we can use Athena to query the data using a SQL or SQL interface. So this is one of the or few of the architectures that uh, where Athena can be leveraged but remember that um, in most of the cases that I have shown you here the data is in S3 data lake and from there we, we are using Athena. But let's say we have data in various different data sources. Like we have data from in RDS, let's say in Hive, uh, then you have data in Redshift, etc. So you have different data sources. As I said, let's say RDS, Aurora, DynamoDB, it can be MongoDB also, which is document oriented database, in memory database like Redis, data warehousing systems like Redshift and Snowflake. So there are various data systems available right in the in the organization and what we might do is let's say we have bi tools wherein we need to run queries on these various data sources of course we can actually use or move all the data to redshift and then query from there also but let's say we have to run ad hoc queries so we have to create an interface on which ad hoc queries are allowed and it can be run by various tools. It can be run by front-end UI screens also, which are executed by customers. Now, as these are ad hoc queries, it does not make sense to put them in Redshift or Snowflake, which are mainly used for data warehousing systems. Also, if we have to put them in S3, we can do that, but that's an additional work. We can move data from all these places to S3 also and maybe some other use case is handling it. Let's say maybe you're moving data from Redshift to, uh, sorry, from S3 to Redshift. So how Athena can help here? So that's where data virtualization comes into picture. So we can create a data virtualization layer on top of it and you can put Athena here. Of course, the Athena will talk to Glue Data Catalog because all these data or all these data stores can be configured as data sources in Athena and the metadata would be stored in Glue data catalog. So we add these data sources to Athena using Glue data catalog and then we have these front-end applications like BI tools, JDBC, ODBC drivers, customer dashboards, etc. They do not have to connect to these individual sources. They do not have to connect to RDS uh, separately or DynamoDB separately or Redshift separately, they can connect to Athena and query or get the records or get the reports using SQL. So Athena is creating a data virtual virtualization layer on top of all the different data sources that we have in our organization. So these are the various ways or various architectural patterns wherein Athena can be used. That's all in Athena and this is where I'm concluding the Athena chapter. Thanks a lot and please be tuned in for other sessions.